alluded to it one time, and then the news broke that uh, George St. Pierre is kind of heading up these the fighters. Uh, I, I guess, what are they calling it? They're not calling it a union. They're calling it a association. association. And, and what are your thoughts on that, and, and how did you find out about it? Listen, I don't know, I don't know enough about it to, to really speak on it. You know, The only thing I need to know is the biggest scumbag in the history of combat sports, Bjork, is, is, is involved in this thing. And if you're a fighter, listen, there's, there's three unions out there now all battling against each other. And if you're a fighter, these guys are all looking to get in your pocket. It's another business. It's, it's, it's a business where guys are going to make money. And as a fighter, if this is what you want to do, you got to figure out whose hand you want in your pocket. And I guarantee you, you don't want Bjork's uh, hand in your pocket. You know what I mean? This guy is one of the biggest. The, oh, the one thing that I do know that came out of this thing is this scumbag who knows nothing about our business is talking. To, he says, yeah, they only pay the, the, the fighters 8%, uh, uh, you know, of the revenue. I hope you're talking about Conor McGregor. Okay. <laughs> yeah. We're paying eight percent of the revenue. You must mean Conor McGregor, right, Bjork? You stupid motherfucker. Um, a Bjorn? You mean is this Bjorn? Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The old Bellator yeah. guy. Bjorn yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you, so yeah. do you think there's a they, motive they for him? Saying, you know, when I was a promoter, I paid fifty-three percent of the revenue because there was no fucking revenue. <laughs> now you're paying fifty-three percent. There was no fucking revenue. Listen, if that's the way we're going to gauge this back in the old days, then I was paying two hundred and fifty percent of the fucking revenue. You know what I mean? Right. What a fucking piece of shit this guy is. <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh, that. my God. From the guys that fought over there and dealt with them. <laughs> Yo, Jimmy, I'm telling you, I heard, I was surprised to see him standing with the guys when I saw a picture of the yeah. thing. Yeah, listen, if yeah. you're going to have a guy in your pocket, you know what I mean, and you're a fighter, you might want to go out and ask some other fighters, you know, sure. what, what their uh, opinion is of this fucking scumbag. So do you think there's you know? a motive for him, Dana? Because uh, do, you th- do you think that he wants that? Yeah, he doesn't to- have a job. <laughs> <laughs> no, the motive is he's unemployed. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's a pretty good motive. Are you mad at uh, any of that? Might be a childlike question, but are you a mad at like GSP or Kane Velasquez or any of these guys that are or, or TJ that are involved? Not at all. Listen, at the end of the day, here's the reality: um, the fighters can go out and do whatever they want to do. They're, they're all grown men, man, sure. and, and in life, you you know how it is. We we all have these paths to walk down, and 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 this is what these guys. You know, I I'm a little shocked. I'll tell you this that. <laughs> Cowboy Cerrone didn't give me a call. You know what I mean? If, if you're that unhappy and whatever, let me tell you this too. And, and, and not to be whatever, but first of all, he's only main evented headline, like three fights, right? Fight nights, right. headline, three fights in his career, never held the title in the WEC, never held the title in the UFC. Right. And a couple of years ago, he was on his boat. He gets into a beef, right? With a guy on another boat. He's in big trouble. Who does he call? He calls me. What do I do? I go out and find him the best criminal defense lawyer, and I spent over $100,000 of my own money. Oh, wow. Yeah. So you, you know, felt like he should have called Ca- you. Yeah, for Cowboys and Roni. So, you know, when I see Cowboys standing up there, it's like, all right, really? Okay. I mean, you wow. develop a... Uh... I mean, not even a thick skin after a while, but I mean, you know, I've done stuff for my buddies. Yeah, I've done stuff for my buddies too. And and guys that, if they don't appreciate it, and then they not only do not appreciate it, but then that you feel they come at you sideways or blindsided after that. I mean, how do you deal with that? You just say, all right, fuck it. Nobody's got thicker skin than me, man. You know, it just gets to the point where you're just like, whatever. Okay. Yeah, so do you, yeah, but you're but, you're a pick up the phone and call kind of guy because when you again I think when you hired Matt and I to do this you just picked up the phone and you you, you cursed you want to do the fucking podcast okay <laughs> so you kind of you kind of like would respect if a guy would at least if they're doing something just to go hey man this is what we're doing and we wanted you to know why yeah ne- never heard a word from Cowboy but whatever it's all good no I never called him never called any of the guys so man you know. Hey, he's a big boy. He oh, can yeah, do what listen, he wants to do. Listen, uh, I, 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 I saw. Yeah, but, um, but this is the way yeah. it is. It's, it's, it's crazy. You, you, you it's, I, I saw this thing the other day, where, where this kid, uh, you know, uh, Patrick Cummins. Yes. Remember Patrick Cummins? Yes. Sure. So let me tell you a Patrick yeah. Cummins story. He just writes this thing where he says, uh, "Yeah, I'm homeless. I'm living in a tent," you know, kind of thing. And uh, this guy was working at Starbucks. Okay, you would pull up to the window, 
You'd order your coffee. Yeah, I'll have a freaking coffee, a, you know, latte, whatever it is. You pull up to the window, and Patrick Cummins would be there ready to take your money and give you, you know, your coffee. Right. Now, some John Jones fell out of the fight, right? And there was this story that Patrick Cummins was telling everybody that he made Daniel Cormier cry. That's right. And, and, and yeah, when they this. wrestled. Yeah. Yeah. So there was huge animosity between those two and whatever. So, and I'm not shitting on his job. Sure. I'm not shitting on his job that he worked at Starbucks. There's, you know, listen, I, I say it all the time. I was a bellman. I used to, I used to say, well, welcome to the, to the Boston Harbor Hotel, sir. Can I take your luggage? Okay. So I'm not, I'm not shitting on this guy's job. You're just saying he wasn't so, actively in the, in the hunt. Exactly. He, exactly. This guy was working at Starbucks. Sure. Okay. I don't know what fucking Starbucks is paying, but I, I'm, I'm assuming it's not a lot of money. Right. Right. So we bring him in. We bring him into the UFC. He's, he's, a, he's a guy who's, you know, just breaking in. We gave him an opportunity. And the guy made $300,000. So my question is, how the fuck are you homeless now? But you weren't homeless when you were working at Starbucks. Now, is he blaming you guys or saying you somehow didn't That's do just, right? It's just that thing he puts out. You know, oh, I'm homeless living in a tent. <laughs> what, what, the fuck, the, what the fuck did you do with your $300,000? Right. You know what I mean? So I, I, so I can't wrap my brain around the fact that you weren't homeless when you worked at Starbucks. You came in here, made three hundred grand, and and now you're homeless. <laughs> yeah, it's like what did you How do? How does that it? make sense? Yeah, that's a fucking circus. Listen, sounds like uh, some, <laughs> so that sounds like some poor money management. To me. Exactly. Yeah. He should deal. Talk to his accountant. Do this. You just picked up the phone and you you, you cursed. You want to do the fucking podcast? <laughs> okay. So you kind of you kind of like would respect if a guy would at least if they're doing something just to go, hey man, this is what we're doing, and we wanted you to know why. Yeah. Ne- never heard a word from Cowboy, but whatever. It's all good. No, I never called him. Never called any of the guys. So. Man, you know, hey, he's a big boy. He oh can yeah, do what listen, he wants to do. Listen, uh, I, 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 I saw. Yeah, but, um, but this is the way yeah. it is. It's, it's, it's crazy. You, you, you. It's. I, I saw this thing the other day, where, where this kid, uh, you know, uh, Patrick Cummins. Yes. Remember Patrick Cummins? Sure. Yes. So let me tell along, you a Patrick man. Cummins story. He just writes this thing where he says, uh, "Yeah, I'm homeless. I'm living in a tent," you know, kind of thing, and. Uh, this guy was working at Starbucks, okay? You would pull up to the window. You'd order your coffee. Yeah, I'll have a freaking coffee, okay. uh, you know, latte, whatever it is. You pull up to the window, and Patrick comes. For him, Dana, because uh, do, you th- do you think that he wants that? Yeah, he doesn't to- have a job. <laughs> <laughs> the, the motive is he's unemployed. Yeah, that's, that's a pretty good motive. Are you mad at uh, any of them? might be a childlike question, but are you a mad at, like, GSP or Cain Velasquez or any of these guys that are, or, or TJ that are involved? Not at all. Listen, at the end of the day, here's the reality. Um, the fighters can go out and do whatever they want to do. They're, they're all grown men, man. Sure. And, and in life, you, you know how it is. We, we all have these paths to walk down, and, and, and this is what these guys, you know. I, I'm a little shocked, I'll tell you this, that <laughs> Cowboy Cerrone didn't give me a call. You know what I mean? If, if you're that unhappy and whatever, let me tell you this, too. And, and, and not to be whatever, but... First of all, he's only main evented, headline like three fights, right? Fight nights, right. headline three fights in his career. Never held the title in the WEC. Never held the title in the UFC, right? And a couple of years ago, eight uh, percent, you know, of the revenue. I hope you're talking about Conor McGregor, okay? <laughs> yeah, we're paying eight percent of the revenue. You must mean Conor McGregor, right, Bjork? You stupid motherfucker. <laughs> Um, a Bjorn, you mean? Is it Bjorn? Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The old Bellator yeah. guy. Bjorn yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you, th- yeah. So do you think there's a then motive then for him? Saying, you know, when I was a promoter, I paid 53% of the revenue. Because there was no fucking revenue. <laughs> now you're paying 53%. There was no fucking revenue. Listen, if that's the way we're going to gauge this back in the old days, then I was paying 250% of the fucking revenue. You know what I mean? Right. What a fucking piece of shit this guy is. <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh, my God. From the guys that fought over there and dealt with them. <laughs> Yo, Jimmy, I'm telling you, I heard, I was surprised to see him standing with the guys when I saw a picture of the yeah. thing. Yeah, listen, if yeah. you're going to have a guy in your pocket, you know what I mean, and you're a fighter, you might want to go out and ask some other fighters, 
you know, sure. what, what their uh, opinion is of this fucking scumbag. So do you think there's you know? a motive alluded to it one time and then the news broke that uh, George St. Pierre is kind of heading up these, the fighters, uh, I, I guess, what are they calling it? They're not calling it a union, they're calling it a association. association. And, and what are your thoughts on that and, and how did you find out about it? Listen, I don't know, I don't know enough about it to, to really speak on it, you know. The only thing I need to know is the biggest scumbag in the history of combat sports, Bjork, is, is, is involved in this thing. And if you're a fighter, listen, there's, there's three unions out there now all battling against each other. And if you're a fighter, these guys are all looking to get in your pocket. It's another business. It's, it's, it's a business where guys are going to make money. And as a fighter, if this is what you want to do, you got to figure out whose hand you want in your pocket. And I guarantee you, you don't want Bjork's. Uh, hand in your pocket. You know what I mean? This guy is one of the biggest... The, oh, the one thing that I do know that came out of this thing is this scumbag who knows nothing about our business is talking to... He says, yeah, they only pay the, the, the fighters... He was on his boat. He gets into a beef, right, with a guy on another boat. He's in big trouble. Who does he call? He calls me. What do I do? I go out and find him the best criminal defense lawyer and i spent over a hundred thousand dollars of my own money oh wow yeah so you, you know, felt like he should have called you yeah for cowboys and Ronnie. so you know when i see cowboys standing up there it's like all right really okay i mean you wow. develop uh i mean not even a thick skin after a while but i mean you know i've done stuff yeah, for my exactly. yeah i've done stuff you for do. my buddies too and, and guys right. that if they don't appreciate it and then they not only do not appreciate it but then that you feel they come at you sideways or blindsided after that. I mean, how do you deal with that? You just say, all right, Listen, fuck it. Nobody's got thicker skin than me, man. Yeah. You know, it just gets to the point where you're just like, whatever. Okay. Yeah, so do you, yeah, but you're, but, you're a pick up the phone and call kind of guy. Cause when you, again, I think when you hired Matt and 